Hi there, welcome back to Sport on 7. I'm Tom Bushell. Uh, loads of activity then happening in Dubai surrounding Euro 2012, which provides a great opportunity to speak to some of the greats in the game. Ron Atkinson is one of those who is in town, and I went to catch up with him at the Ibn Battuta Gates Hotel. Here we are at Ibn Battuta Hotel, and I'm joined on the couch by footballing royalty, former Manager of Manchester United, Sheffield Wednesday, Nottingham Forest, Aston Villa, Atletico Madrid and more, of course. Uh, Ron Atkinson, hello and welcome to Dubai. You're welcome to you. It's uh, great. I love coming here. Really I know do. you got in last night, didn't you? Uh, first impressions of Dubai. I mean, it's a great place to be, isn't it? It is. I don't forget, I've been coming here since... In fact, we actually played in 1978. We actually played in Abu Dhabi. We play, and... Uh, I mean, the airport wasn't as big as this room here, and it's unbelievable. <laughs> and, and I've been coming to I've been coming to Dubai for well over twenty years now. Unbelievable what's happened. And people ask me what's my favourite place, you know, and I always I always put Dubai at the top of the list. It's a fascinating place, and of course they've invested so heavily in, in football in recent years. Of course, Abu Dhabi's involvement with uh, Manchester City and the UAE Olympic team will be at the London Games. They are so passionate about football here, and I think you can tell, despite it being the Middle East. Euro 2012 is all over the city at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's, 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 uh, it's amazing, really, because uh, obviously they're not represented there, but, of course, you've got so many, you've got so many English living here, loads of Italians in Dubai, and there are lots of, uh, lots of different nationalities, and uh, whatever they say about football, it is the, the universal language. Absolutely. So what are your tips for Euro 2012? I know you've had time in Spain. Are they the favourites once again to go for that unique treble and get Euro 2008, the World Cup in 2010, and then maybe these Euros in 2012 as well? They're favourites. I, I think this might be just one tournament uh, too many for them. I think it's going to be a close call, but for me, I actually think the favourites... My tips, are, I, th I think Germany will get to the final. And ironically enough, I think they'll play Holland in the final, who are actually in the same group. Spain got great midfield players. They've got seven of the best midfield players in the world. Um, I think they'll miss Poyo. I think Poyo is a great team leader for them. And they obviously need Torres um, to recapture his form of maybe his Liverpool form. If that happened, then they would be, they would be the team to beat. But I've just got a feeling it might be one tournament too many for them. Former Manchester United manager, of course, the whole Rio Ferdinand argument has erupted in, in the UK, but should he be at Euro 2012? Well, it's a strange one, this, because Roy Hodgson didn't pick him originally. Now, in all fairness, if he picks him this time, and I read a great article the other day explaining it all, he will still only be, theoretically, fifth choice. So, but he hasn't got a cover right back if anything happens to Johnson, because they're asking him young Phil Jones to do a lot of co doubling up so the logic of that I'm not sure what the reasons why he wasn't considered I actually I mean Alex Ferguson said himself you know earlier in the season he said Ferdinand shouldn't play in the way you know and I know that might be a little bit self-interest getting him keeping him fit for next season but he he, he actually said that uh, maybe the Euros would be too difficult for him i.e. having to play too many games i I think that, I think we should leave it to the manager. The manager has picked him, has picked Terry, and that, that's, that's the basis. All right, well, let's take our eyes off Euro 2012 for a moment and concentrate on Aston Villa, a former club of yours, of course, and have been through massive changes in the last few days. Paul Lambert being installed as their new manager. Do you think that's a good move? He obviously had a fantastic season with Norwich, but do you think he can take that success and, and, and take it to a bigger club like Aston Villa? Well, he's done very well. At, uh, he's done very well wherever he's been. Actually, as a manager, he did well. He started at Wickham, did well. Colchester did well. Then he's had two great years at Norwich. Um, so you know, he, he's uh, he certainly earned his stripes and earned the right to be. I actually, uh, I have to say, I think McLeish was hard done by. I think Alex McLeish should have been given another year, but he hasn't been. So basically, you, you're saying Paul Lambert. Yeah, his pedigree is good enough. He's one of the up and coming managers, but there's no question. The club need investment. The club need new players. This is, I think it's the, the weakest Aston Villa squad I've seen in the Premiership ever. Talking of investment now, just on another note with investment, there's been rumours in the last few days that uh, a Kuwaiti businessman is looking to invest in Nottingham Forest, another form of club of yours, of course. He said uh, originally the rumours were Leeds United and then it became Nottingham Forest and apparently he wants to invest in a sleeping giant of English football. Nottingham Forest would fit that bill. 
that club really could do with investment right now and, and would investment take them back to the premiership and where they want to be investment plus good management you know if um if whoever's got the money to spend spends it wisely yeah i, I could see that because it is a big club great supporters um but you've got any number in the, in the championship now like sheffield wednesday in a similar situation forest and people like that birmingham city um but forest would be i i thought uh, I'm not too sure there's not a lot of debt there. I thought there was quite an amount of debt. Um, but if there's not, yeah, it's, certainly, it's certainly a smashing club. It is a club that ought to be knocking on the door or, or ought to be in the Premiership. So just to recap, we're looking at Germany to win Euro 2012. Yeah, it's not a convincing shout. <laughs> cause, um, but I like the way Germany... I tell you what's put me off Germany a little bit. I know it's Mertzsecker's in the squad. Now, I, I was very impressed with Germany in the last World Cup when they put a lot of young players in, Ozil, uh, Muller, people like this. But I was never convinced about the two central defenders, Mertzsecker and uh, Metzelder. And I'm just a bit, just a little bit edgy now. Now I've seen him back in the squad because he's not as good as the rest of the, the, the team of that ilk deserves. But I'll stick with them. They do well in tournaments. They're now out of play in tournaments. Holland got a load of match winners, haven't they? Um, Van Persie, who I think will be the leading goal scorer. Um, you've got Robin, you've got Schneider, um, Van der Vaart will play a cameo role in there, Huntelaar. So they've got good match winners, but I th I'm going on that old German thing of tournaments. There we go. Germany to win Euro 2012, Van Persie to be the top goal scorer, Forrest to be back in the Premiership soon enough, and Villa under Lambert will be fine. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so, something like that, yeah, 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 yeah. Ron, thank you very much for joining me and have a great time in Dubai. Will do. McLaren's Lewis Hamilton became the seventh different winner in as many races in a fascinating Canadian Grand Prix that came alive in the final laps. Lewis Hamilton fought his way into the lead in the closing 20 laps and gets his first win of this record-breaking season. The result moves Lewis Hamilton into the championship lead, which of course he'll be loving for McLaren. He's two points ahead of Fernando Alonso, who'd have thought Ferrari would be up there at this point of the season. And he is one ahead of Sebastian Vettel of Red Bull. In golf on the US PGA Tour, Rory McIlroy had to settle for a share of seventh place at the St. Jude Classic as a final hole double bogey ended his hopes of a morale-boosting win ahead of his US Open title defence. McIlroy was shown a lead as he stood on the 18th tee, but he found water on the last as he hit a 69. Dustin Johnson clinched victory as birdies on the 16th and the 17th helped him card a closing 66. And on the European Tour, world number three, Lee Westwood is hopeful of his first major and a third successive win for a UK golfer at the US Open, starting on Thursday. The 39-year-old, who finished second in two majors in 2010, has been third at the US Open twice, including last year. He coasted to a five-shot win at the Nordea Masters in Sweden on Sunday. A packed week on Sport on 7 then, of course, and more of the same next week. Enjoy your sport for the next seven days, and we'll see you back here at 8 o'clock next Monday night. Good night.